So why in the world should you continue to watch any part of this screencast? Well, because when we learn how to design better presentations, our students and our audience will actually have the ability to learn more information and retain it. Putting too many words up on the slide is the biggest mistake that we can make. Stick around, we're gonna show you exactly why. There are many products that are out on the market right now to be able to utilize software uh, presentation tools. If you stick to everything that they have to talk about, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna run into a problem. The information in here is gonna be able to apply to all of these wonderful tools that you see here. This is a show and tell. This is a time for you to actually show the audience what it is that you need them to know and tell them how to be able to get there. You've done show and tell as a kid. It's the same type of deal. Reduce all of your information down to its core essentials. One of the reasons why we look at this is called cognitive load theory. Cognitive load theory comes from the aspect of we have a redundancy effect, meaning that we have two channels that go in for learning. We have the visual and we have the auditory. When you read those words, you already heard yourself talking. You cannot hear two things at one time. In addition to hearing two things at one time, which you can't do, you also can't look at more than one thing at a time and try to process it. So all those wonderful things that you may see on a slide, oftentimes if they don't have anything to do with your information, these things are going to then be called a seductive detail. Get rid of those things. Here's an example of one. Matter of fact, when you take a look at this slide, the first thing that you see on these slides is the name or the logo. People who put names and logos over every slide, get rid of them. They should go at the beginning or the end of the slideshow. Bright slides. You can see that there's a lot of words in here. You can also see that there's a problem here with the bright color. You should be brighter than the slide. Dark background, white words, get rid of the um, slide numbers, those are going to distract as well. Again, another seductive detail. If you go into your presentation software, doesn't matter exactly what it is, they will all give you templates. If you notice every one of these templates has fulfilled the, the seductive detail areas. So get rid of them, create your own dark background with light slide, with the light words. Make them white, make them yellow, make them bright. If you try to use those templates, if you take a look at this, my presentation doesn't have an overview, but most likely I will try to pigeonhole my information into this area. Don't do it. Make sure that you make your own slides, create your own template. Now, I'm gonna show you a slide, and in this slide, I want you to be able to tell me where your attention goes. Most likely your attention was immediately drawn to the message, and I'm actually even highlighting that. So you can see that I want your eyes to go right to the message. I have actually made the rest of the slide go away and I have highlighted it in a red rectangle. That's where I want you to go, right? The rest of the slide, if you take a look at it, has a whole lot of words. I'm not exactly sure what the message is. So we have to figure out what the main message is. We have to find out what number one is going to be. Let's summarize it. Number two, can we summarize it even more? And number three, we're gonna look at being able to summarize that in the conclusion of our presentation. So general rule, one message per slide. So you just saw that earlier, we're gonna see how we can apply that information. So now I'm gonna show you a slide. I want you to be able to count the number of soccer balls that you see. If you said nine, absolutely correct. You got that answer correct. You were able to count the number of balls that were in that slide. If you didn't get it, not a problem. Uh, you just meant that you spent too much time trying to focus in on that slide. Let's try it again with another set of soccer balls. Now, if you said five, by the way, I deducted two seconds off of that. And you probably got the five much easier than you got the nine. And that's because we have the ability to only have about five or six items that we can put into our memory. That's part of that information processing and part of cognitive load. And it also goes back into a thing called the redundancy theory. The message, if you take a look at this slide, what is it that we can do based off of what we just found out to actually make this work a little bit better? Well, we can say, here is the message and explain the message to the audience. Here's what we want you to be able to take away from this presentation. As a matter of fact, you do that at the very beginning. We talked about that 
right at the front how important it is for the design of a PowerPoint slide. We want to make sure that we keep reiterating that during your presentation. You're going back to what the message is. You're reminding the audience of what it is that you're presenting to support the main message of your presentation. And finally, when you conclude everything, you want to be able to make sure that the audience has been included and they understand what it is that you just presented to them. If you take a look side by side at these two, you will notice the one on the left, not so attractive. The one on the right brings up the same message but it does so in a much easier to follow pattern. And you will notice the one on the right, if you actually counted all those words, there was only six words. The one on the left, I spend too much time reading and I block both channels. Create a story that is going along with your presentation. Don't make it a war story. You know, if we start off and we say, hey, comedians don't read off of the script or hand it to you. No, they memorize their script. They know their jokes. They cannot hand you a script and say, here, deliver this content. So create a knowledgeable story. Know your material. That's the important part here. You created it. You authored it. So therefore, take ownership of it. Using notes, not a bad idea when you, re when you rehearse, but when it comes down to using the presentation, do not read off of your notes. That's what you will end up doing the entire time. My notes that you see in this presentation are very detailed. It gives me an idea of what I need to remember when I'm doing this presentation live. It's much longer. And I can now tell you what I meant to cover in that particular slide. These are my slides. These are my notes. If you think of social media, Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. Facebook, older people have a tendency to use this, and we put more words than photos on anything. Snapchat, photo with very brief words. Instagram, a little bit of both, but Instagram is more of a permanent type photo thing. Pictures mean a lot. That's why people are all around. So is there a number of slides that you can use to determine how long your presentation is? No, there is no magical number. What I'm working right now is called Pikachua, where I'm trying to get as many slides in in a 20 second time frame per slide. So, you know, figure it out. You got to rehearse it to get your numbers done. Make sure that you go and let go of the things that you've done before. We have a tendency as human beings to do nothing more than what we saw before. So if somebody gave a bad presentation with a bunch of words on a slide, guess what we do? We continue the same process. So don't fall into that pattern. Follow the rules that are identified in here. It'll make life a lot easier. Be enthusiastic about things. I know you can't see me right now, but hopefully out of my voice, you recognize that I'm enthusiastic about giving you this information. So be enthusiastic when you're up in front. And if you try something new and fail, the audience probably isn't going to know. And if they notice, they're probably not going to care. Make sure whatever words you put up on the screen, you reinforce. You have to summarize the whole content for one slide and make sure that whatever words you use, you reinforce it with your speaking words. So now you cover the visual and now you've also covered the auditory sections that you need to have. Get rid of the cheesy photos. Something like this, great photo. The only problem is there's too many watermarks on it. So go ahead and get rid of those things. Make your own photo. It's not a problem. Take a picture with your own camera. Okay, Smartphones work just as, just as well. So go ahead, take your own photos if you can't find the ones that you want. Oh my gosh, slide transitions. These things are enough to drive you nuts. So slide transitions, really no point in using them. Um, and actually, they become quite distracting every time that you notice that they are on every slide. So don't use them on every slide. It makes life horrible. Stop doing it, people. As a matter of fact, transitions really should only be used for a re reveal of a rhetorical question of something that you may have actually asked an audience. And one of those other things you may want to use for is if you're editing a movie um, or a video, make sure that you can see if it'll fade in and out. Other than that, get rid of the transitions. You spend more time working on transitions than anything at all. So again, transitions, just a little bit if you try to do any type of reveal for an answer. Other than that, get rid of them. Don't use them at all. Notes. If you are a person who hands out notes like this, you need to stop doing it. Stop doing it. These are your slides. These are your notes. So the audience, the students should not get these. Okay. What you need to do is use something like this. 
you want to use what is re this is a Google document so the students get a copy of this they get it sent to them digitally we use a bitly shortener to be able to send this to them and after we send it to them they have the ability to take a look at something like this okay so all of my information is much more expanded and I put all of this information into a Google Doc so they have the ability to take a look at it. Yes, you can save it to a PDF. The only problem with a PDF, though, is that thing has a tendency to not be updated as much. Now, I didn't come up with the idea of sending out a Google Doc or Google Slide to my students or participants in a conference. This came from three educators that created the HyperDoc Handbook. And this is a really great read, talks about how you can make HyperDocs and why they're much better than just dealing with a static PDF. Well, that's the end. We've crossed that finish line. You can see that the road is going to continue. In this session, we learned about design and why it is so important to make sure that you get rid of the seductive details. You keep the backgrounds dark, you be more contrasted, you keep things down to one message per slide. I hope this was useful. If you found it useful, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, pass it on to other people. If you, there's something that you, else you would like to see or you have a comment about this, please leave it in the comment section and I'll make sure I take a look at it. Thanks. Have a great one.